Another edition of The Open Window. Uh, hope you had a great weekend. Uh, if not, hopefully today we'll be able to make this just a little bit better uh, by spending some time with the Lord. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, we just welcome you. We welcome your Holy Spirit here during this hour. Holy Spirit, you have free, complete, and total reign over this hour, over this station, over this room. Uh, Holy Spirit, just have your way with us today. Uh, we just ask for your presence to be not only here in the studio, but everywhere this program is being viewed. In Jesus' name, amen. So glad that you could join us today. Uh, I want to start off today uh, with, a, with a special prayer. Uh, we want to mention, we had some news, some very uh, disturbing news come out of uh, uh, Texas that uh, Justice Antonin Scalia passed away. Uh, which leaves a vacancy on the Supreme Court. Uh, you know, it's so important. Uh, you know, elections have consequences. And it's so important that we elect people who will uh, put correct judges, on, godly judges, uh, on, uh, on benches, on courts throughout our country. Uh, and this is, this is going to wind up being a big deal, I think. And... Um, we need to, to have uh, just a moment of prayer, not only for Justice Scalia's family, but for our country and the process it's about to go through. You know, fewer things are as ugly as when somebody's trying to nominate uh, a judge. It gets pretty bad. And, uh, you know, I'm really, part of my prayer is uh, for Christians to be protected through this whole thing. Uh, and, and that the country will be protected through this whole thing and, and that it not become uh, as divisive as it is poised to be. Uh, so we need to pray for that as well. So let's just take a moment and pray for our country in regards to this and, and what's going on. Father, right now we know that you were not surprised by the death of Justice Scalia. Uh, Lord, we just depend upon you during this whole coming up process, we lift up Justice Scalia's family and ask right now uh, that you would comfort his wife, his nine children, his 36 grandchildren. Uh, let them feel the love of the country that he has served for so long and so well. And Father, right now we just ask for your grace to be on them, your peace to be on them. Allow them to uh, mourn properly, mourn with you, but understand that, they're, that this dear loved one is with you now. Uh, Father, we just lift up our country in what is poised to be a very contentious battle. Lord, right now we just ask for uh, your peace to reign over this whole situation. And Father, that uh, that uh, eventually a godly person will be placed on the bench that will uh, hear your precepts and your edict uh, and, and filter everything through your word. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Uh, we gotta, it's going to be a big, it's going to be big, uh, but I think if we lift this matter up in prayer, uh, if we submit to the Lord, uh, this is, I think we'll be okay. I, I, you know, this did not surprise God. This was not a, he didn't w wake up on Saturday and go, oh, I forgot, you know, Justice Scalia is coming. Uh, he knew what was going on. So we have to trust in him uh, and we have to put our trust in him, not in a political party, not in a politician, not in anyone who's in, in office. We have to trust the Father, our Heavenly Father. Uh, We've been going through a lot of stuff uh, the last few weeks, and it's been kind of fun. We've had such a great time in, in, uh, during this program and, and all that God has done for us. Uh, we're going to read the word that the Lord gave us for 2016. 
uh, and then we're going to get into some prayer requests and plus some prayer events that are coming up. We're going to hit some more of those today. Um, uh, several of these I'm very, very excited about. So I want to go into the word that the Lord gave us for today, or for this year. Uh, a word for Macon and Middle Georgia for 2016. I love Middle Georgia. I love Macon. I have a purpose for Macon that has not yet been fulfilled. Why would you hate something that I have loved? This region has not been forgotten. I am visiting Macon and Middle Georgia this year. I am bringing justice, salvation, reconciliation, healing, and prosperity. I am coming to Macon in Middle Georgia, and I'm bringing revival. And then we asked you to call in. If you are ready to run with this word, we asked you to call in, and we're still asking you to call in. If you haven't called in yet, call in, yes, Lord, to the, to the number that we have for today. Uh, now, I want you to make sure that you're aware that that number's uh, live right now. We've got people here ready to answer the phones, ready to take your prayer request, your praise report, or your yes, Lord statement. So 478-254-2480 is the phone number. You can also email prayer at wgnm.com. We'd love to hear from you that way as well. Uh, so that number is, is live. We've got prayer volunteers here ready to uh, take your prayer request. Uh, so eager. We're so excited that we have people to, here to help. It's great. <laughs> uh, and we just know the Lord's going to bless uh, you through them and, and, and bless them uh, through their time here today. So if you've got a prayer request or a praise report, I want to make sure that you call that number, 254-2480. Uh, we're so excited about everything that is going on in, in in the world today as far as what God's got in store. I'm here, I get reports back from churches all across the country uh, about what God is doing, and I'm starting to see things move, uh, not just in middle Georgia, but all over the country. So I'm really excited about what's going on. Um, I want to take a few moments to uh, go over a couple of things. I've got... Um, some video I'm going to play here off of my laptop. Uh, and one of these uh, actually has, uh, uh, I almost didn't play this because of a, um, there's a typo in it. <laughs> so, well, you know, I had a typo in my, my presentation last week. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and play it because I think this is a good one. Uh, but I want to remind you that on the, uh, the 25th of February is National Collegiate Day of Prayer. And uh, there's a, I want to show you this video because it's so important to understand uh, the history of our colleges. Uh, some of our, the biggest names in colleges that we have uh, were started off as Christian colleges. And uh, we believe that these colleges need to have a, a day of prayer. We need to be praying for our colleges because that's where our, our future leaders come out of, our future uh, politicians, our future business leaders and community leaders uh, will come out of these schools. And what they're asking for is for someone, you don't have to be there, you don't have to go to that college, but someone to set aside a day of prayer and you will lift up a college or a university in prayer. And right now, uh, I looked at it uh, of the, um, uh, there's almost two thirds of the colleges that they have listed have not been claimed yet. Uh, Mercer has been claimed here locally. Uh, and I noticed that uh, um, what is now Middle Georgia, they have it listed as Macon uh, State or Macon uh, University, but uh, uh, Middle Georgia has not. And I believe Wesleyan has not been taken either. So uh, we want to make sure that we get these uh, colleges covered. Now I'm going to show you this video. Uh, pardon, it was playing off of my laptop, so uh, uh, pardon any kind of uh, uh, hesitations it has or anything. But here we go. We're going to look at this video about the Collegiate uh, Day of Prayer. When believers unite in prayer, everything changes. Throughout American history, our college campuses have repeatedly been transformed by seasons of spiritual awakening. The key to these Collegiate Awakenings was fervent united prayer. In 1823, every major denomination and university in America agreed to set aside the last Thursday of February as a day of united prayer for colleges. Both young and old came together to pray for God to change the future of a whole generation. 
They saw college students as the future of their churches, their culture, their society, and believed values found on college campuses would become the values of America. This perspective moved them to pray with two main goals, a spontaneous move of the Holy Spirit throughout the student body in America, and the triumph of the gospel throughout the unreached world. As a result, by the end of the 19th century, the outpouring of the Spirit on college campuses revolutionized some of our largest public universities. And God heard their cry. Lives were changed. Whole campuses were swept into the presence of God. That generation changed the course of history. All right, so we've got the, uh, the website that we want to go to, uh, and, I'm, and let me get back to my presentation here. I've got the website for you. Uh, here we go. Uh, you want to go to collegiatedayofprayer.org. Uh, now, this is February 25th this year, and uh, uh, you can sign up. Now, you don't have to be at the college to pray for it. Uh, you can sign up. If you've got somebody who goes to a college or university that's listed as unclaimed, uh, and it's out of state, well, by all means, claim that college. Uh, you, that's the neat thing about prayer. You can pray for anything, anywhere. Um, and you don't have, to, you don't have to be right there. So uh, go to this website, collegiatedayofprayer.org. Uh, the people that are behind this are rock solid. Uh, there's a diverse group of people behind this. Um, and so it is something that is... Uh, very, very neat. I'm very, very excited about this. So please, I would love to see every college, uh, not only in Georgia, but specifically middle Georgia, since that's where we are. Uh, we want to see every college and university covered in prayer here in Georgia. Uh, and I think that's very, very important for us to do. So uh, please uh, uh, go to that website, sign up for a university. And it, just because it's been claimed doesn't mean you can't sign up to pray for that school. It's not just a one and done. This is if the more people praying, I guess the better. Uh, uh, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. I'm excited. Uh, see what happens. I can't wait. I, I gotta go claim a college of my own. I guess. Um, so anyway, we've got some other things uh, that I want to get to today. I've got some other coming events that I want to mention too, but I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang on to those uh, for a little bit because I got a couple of things I really want to get into uh, as we get ready to. Um, to go to the Lord in prayer and, and pray over some of these requests. If you've got a prayer request or uh, anything, 254-2480. Call that number right now and uh, see what is going on. You know, Let us know what's going on and what you need prayer for. We are going to agree with you that God is going to move in your situation. You know, we also take praise reports. Uh, the praise reports that we have are, are incredible. Uh, we have been seeing such a great and awesome time uh, with these praise reports. Uh, the, uh, the time that we have uh, when, you, when we give these praise reports, when we get praise reports, it's really kind of cool. Uh, we put them up on the wall and uh, we, we have them up lining up. Uh, we actually probably need to get a new picture because there's so many more uh, than, we, than we have had. But uh, uh, they're starting to line the walls of our lobby here at the station. And uh, they just serve as a testimony of what God is doing through not only this program, but through His Holy Spirit. Uh, and the people, I mean, we've had ears opened that were clogged. We've had uh, pain leave body. We've had knees healed. Uh, all sorts of things are going just uh, like gangbusters. Uh, so anyway, uh, I want to go ahead and mention a couple of these Yes Lord. Uh, if you've got a Yes Lord, you can email us too prayer at wgnm.com uh, and just say yes lord on, on the on the email address uh, we've got um, uh, there's one lady who keeps emailing and I don't know where she's actually emailing me from I'm going to assume that she's from the UK United Kingdom uh, so I want to take a moment she she lists us up or she she sends in requests quite frequently and um, I, I'm not really sure but I, it, I think just from what I gather that she may be homeless and that she uses a, like a public terminal of some sort. And because uh, a lot of the prayer requests that she sends are, uh, they're, they're a little incoherent, but I've been able to kind of piece them together as to see what she wants. But I just want to lift up Deborah. If we could lift up Deborah in the UK, 
How about that? <laughs> All right, God knows who she is. Uh, Father, right now, we just lift up Deborah in the UK to you. Uh, Lord, we just ask right now that you begin to move. You know her requests. Uh, you know what she needs. Uh, Father, uh, just we just ask for that someone would come across her path and demonstrate your love to her in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to email her uh, after the program and let her know that we lifted up her, her, her request because they're, they're quite numerous uh, and, and they're ongoing. So we just want to lift her up in prayer. And if you think about it, lift up Deborah in the UK. I don't know who she is, uh, but her address is a UK uh, email address. Uh, we've got some people saying yes, Lord, to the word of the Lord about revival in this, uh, in this area, in middle Georgia. Uh, and uh, I want to, uh, the, the 254-2480, um, I'm going to ask somebody to check that because I'm not hearing the phone ring. <laughs> and usually we hear the phone ring at least a couple times by now. Uh, I'm going to ask somebody to check that. And we'll also put up our, um, our other prayer request line. Uh, is 474-3986. That's the one that runs throughout the day. Uh, and so we've got that as well. Uh, so here we've got some people saying, yes, Lord. Uh, Verlissa is saying, yes, Lord. Um, we have a female caller saying, yes, Lord. We have Betty in Macon saying, yes, Lord. These are more people that are agreeing that revival is coming. And uh, it's coming to middle Georgia. And it's coming now. Now, one of the things that, before we go into uh, this program, we always spend uh, about 45 minutes beforehand in praise and worship. And uh, we got to spend some time in praise and worship today. And during that time, sometimes the Lord will give me things just to touch on. And um, the first thing that really kind of keyed off during praise and worship uh, was the phrase, He has overcome. You know, we've got a lot of things. He's written the answer before you even knew there was a problem. He has overcome. And so we need to be dependent upon Him. The other thing that um, uh, was really dropped into my, my spirit, and I've mentioned this several times, and I'm hoping I'm going to get through this pretty good, so you just hang on there. Um, but 14 years ago this month, uh, my wife and I experienced the first of what wound up being five miscarriages. And, um, uh, and it's, that's rough, that's, that's rough to deal with, and I understand that. Uh, and the, you may be dealing with either miscarriage or a loss of a child. Um, and so I've got a, a, a word for, if that's you, if you know somebody who is, has gone through of either a miscarriage or the loss of a child, uh, I'm gonna. I'll probably wind up clipping this off for YouTube, and we'll put this up on our, our social media and stuff. But uh, you might want to go ahead and say, "Hey, tune into WGNM real quick." Um, so if if you've experienced a miscarriage or loss of a child, I've got a word. So here we go. If you've experienced miscarriage or loss of a child, God wants you to know that He has them, not a dead relative. He considers this a privilege he reserves to himself. I know. I understand. It's, you know, we've said this before that uh, my mother-in-law passed away before uh, 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 we had any of, we were able to adopt our two children. But, you know, we were always saying things like, you know, oh, well, the kids are being cared for by our grandmother or my mother-in-law or a cousin who's passed away. And the Lord brought me up short years ago. And I don't say that anymore, but he wanted me to tell you this. This is something that I, I've gotten a revelation on a couple years ago. But he wanted me to tell you this today. If you've gone through a miscarriage or a loss of a child, the dead relatives does not have them. But he has them. He loves children. And he loves them so much that he reserves the care of them. Once they got to heaven, he reserves the care of them to himself. And he has your children. Don't worry about it. Don't fret. He's got them. What better? Who better to take care of them? Who better? And I just wanted to, I'm just going to pray. If you're dealing with this today, maybe for some reason Valentine's Day triggers the emotion. I'm not sure. Uh, but if that's part of the problem uh, or one of the triggers for, for an emotional uh, uh, setback, uh, I'm just going to pray for you right now. Uh, I know the hurt. I know 
Uh, and this is specifically, I, I know there's, there's another set of hurt of infertility. Uh, that's not what this particular word is about. I know that hurt as well. Uh, but I just want to lift this up, the miscarriage and loss of a child. Father, right now, I just lift up people in our region who have gone through miscarriages or loss of a children. Father, I just ask for your Holy Spirit to be present right now. Envelop them in your love. Show them, reveal to them the arms where your children are. Show them where their children are. Show them by wrapping your arms around these parents. Father, right now, I just ask that you would wrap them in your comfort and your love the same way you've got these young children. And Father, right now, I just pray for a healing, for an emotional healing that allows them to, be, seek, to receive the comfort that this is intended to, to minister. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, all right, let's get into some prayer requests. Uh, if you've got a prayer request, 254-2480, uh, we want to hear from you. We've got some prayer requests. Um, uh, Barry in Macon uh, requests healing for his good friend Robert, who had a massive stroke last week and just came off the ventilator yesterday. Prayers that today's cat skin will show continued healing and pray for mercy and peace through God for his family. Lord, right now we lift up Robert to you, this friend of Barry. We just ask right now that there would be a supernatural recovery from this stroke. Father, right now that your peace would reign and that as your peace reigns over Robert's body, we just ask that all the synapses, all the mental pathways uh, begin to uh, come aright. Uh, Father, right now we just seek a renewing of his mind in Jesus precious name. Uh, Cassandra called, please, please pray that her daughter Paris does not lose some benefits. And Father, right now we just ask uh, for, these, uh, uh, for this provision in Jesus' name. Uh, Ms. Smith, uh, she requests prayers for her family as she feels that her neighbors upstairs are stalking them and invading their privacy. She prays they will move or leave the family in peace. Father, right now, we just declare for your protection over Miss Smith's family. We just declare a divine hedge of protection. Uh, these invasions of privacy must stop in Jesus' name. This harassment and stalking must stop in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Uh, Joseph is asking for prayer. He's Joseph Sr. is asking for prayer for his son, Joseph Jr., to walk in God's fulfillment and that Joseph Sr. will have the strength and wisdom in approaching him to, uh, to be what God has in mind for him. Lord, we pray for this father and son. Lord, we just pray for the Josephs. We just ask right now for a supernatural divine encounter. Lord, right now that you will give them wisdom and vision to see what they need to do. Uh, in you and that they will accomplish what you have set before them in Jesus' precious name. And the scripture that was brought to mind on this, Joseph Sr., was that uh, the hearts of the Father will be turned toward their children. Uh, and that's the kind of prayer, praying, fathers praying for their children. You know, we've, we've celebrated many times of praying mothers and praying grandmothers, and I'm the result of, of praying mothers and, and, and grandmothers. And, and uh, the, nothing could be better. But I tell you what, there's something special about fathers who pray for their children. And uh, I, you know, my dad prayed for me and my brother. Uh, we know that. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's something powerful about fathers praying for their children, especially their sons. There's something about that. A um, uh, lady called in praying for a job. Uh, with an increase in financial blessings, also healing in her body, wants to get off medication if possible. Father, right now, we just pray for this lady. We just ask right now for divine provision through employment. And Lord, too, for healing in her body that allows her to come off of the medication uh, completely and wisely in Jesus' precious name. David called in, uh, struggling with addiction, dealing with probation. Heard someone talk about 
uh, the wolf in someone's life. He's afraid of losing everything uh, and needs prayer to guide himself back in the right direction. Uh, Lord, right now, we just lift up David to you in dealing with this addiction. Father, right now, I just pray that he become addicted to you. He become addicted to your word. He become addicted to the things of you, the things of the kingdom. Uh, Father, right now, we just ask that the kingdom becomes so big in his life that he neglects and starves this addiction. And Father, right now, for the people that are, are coming against him or to try to lead him back in the path that he once walked, we just ask right now for uh, seven times the number of people to come around him and to help him walk the path that you've chosen. Father, right now, I just ask that you send him Holy Ghost friends who are uh, able to shepherd him back to the way he needs to go and, and to kill this addiction. Uh, a lady is calling in requests for uh, a grandson uh, who's involved with the wrong crowd that the Lord would grant him mercy through an upcoming court case. Um, Father, right now, we just pray for this grandson. Lord, we just lift him up to you. Uh, Father, we just ask that you begin to gu gently guide and lead him back to you. Uh, help him to stay away from this wrong crowd uh, in Jesus' precious name. And we declare favor over him in Jesus' name. Uh, Julia uh, she is calling in. She's almost 83 years old. Uh, and she... she Okay, she's generally asking for prayer for herself. Father, right now, we just ask you to lift up Julia. We just lift up Julia to you. Uh, Father, right now, for a renewed sense of energy and purpose. Father, send her people that need her to minister to them in Jesus' precious name and help her to see what's going on in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you, Julia. Uh, a man called in uh, praying for... Uh, for him to get his life together, to be a better person, have his mind and soul restored. Uh, Father, we just lift up this man. We don't know who it is. We don't know his name. We don't know where he's calling from. Uh, but Father, right now, we just speak order to his life, mental order, spiritual order, uh, divine order to his life in Jesus' precious name. Uh, you know, too often we pray, for us to get our life back together, or we think we have to get our life back together before we can come to God. Well, you know, that's, I heard somebody say years ago, uh, you don't have to be cleaned up to take a bath. So come to God and He will straighten out your life. He will, you follow His precepts, His edicts, uh, and He'll start making things make sense again in Jesus' name. Um, we're going to call, we're going to do this right now. I'm going to tell you what, we're going to take a break here for just a second and go back to uh, a couple of these events that uh, are coming up that I want to mention. Uh, there's another event that we are in the process. We are sponsoring this one specifically. Uh, it's taking place in Atlanta, um, and it's the Reinhard Bonnke, uh, the Gospel Crusade with Reinhard Bonnke. Uh, I want you to uh, understand, you know, we have... Uh, Daniel Kalinda, uh, we air his program, which is also uh, Reinhard Bonnke. It's two ministers that work together very closely. Uh, and Reinhard Bonnke has done such a wonderful job uh, taking the gospel to Africa. Uh, he quite, I, I know that Billy Graham is still around and he's still, we're still doing great things through his ministry. But Reinhard Bonnke really is a, a, a Billy Graham for this generation, for today. Uh, and I'm really excited about the chance, that the, the fact that he's coming to Atlanta. And I want to make sure that you understand what's going on and who he is. Uh, many people don't know who he is here in America. Uh, but this is a major event that's coming to Atlanta at the beginning of March. And I want, I want to play the video out of the uh, laptop here. And I want you to hear what uh, is in store for Atlanta the first part of March. Hi. I'm Evangelist Reinhard Bonnke, and I would like to share my heart with you. We read in Matthew 24, verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom must be preached. It is an imperative. God is urging us to preach his glorious, wonderful gospel that brings salvation. I spent most of my life ministering in Africa, there I witnessed God turn the tables in a mighty way in whole nations. During the last 10 years, 
our ministry of Christ for All Nations was able to lead 55 million people to Jesus who completed a decision card and were fed into the follow-up system. 55 million. What a mighty blessing. But then one day the Spirit of God touched my soul and I saw waves of salvation rise here in America. America will be saved. I began to call out, America will be saved from city to city, from state to state, from coast to coast. It is possible because God is in it. Please, I'm asking all of you, let's rally at the foot of the cross for the salvation of our great nation. Let's work together. I commit myself to this vision for America to be saved and I pray that you may do it too. All right, we're so excited. We're helping to, to promote this event uh, here at uh, WGNM. So happy to do so. But I want to give you the website again uh, for that. Um, and it's the Gospel Crusade with Reinhard Bonnke, uh, March 5th and 6th uh, at Phillips Arena in Atlanta. And the website for that is gospelcrusade.org. Um, that's a real easy trip to make uh, for most of us here in middle Georgia. Uh, so you want to make sure that you've got, uh, uh, go get it, go and get some information and let them know that you're coming. And, and uh, so they, uh, I just think that this is going to be great for not only Atlanta, but also for the state of Georgia. And uh, some people will go from this area and bring back whatever they get there. Uh, and, and, and be it's going to be great. I think this could be the, the, the launching for all of it. I want to get back into some more, uh, prayer request here, but I did have another quick word, something that I wanted to pray for the Lord's leading me to pray for. Um, emotional hurts and church wounds. Uh, I, I, I just heard those two things, the emotional hurts and church wounds. If that's you, call in right now. We're going to pray for that before the end of the show. Um, and uh, just call 254-248. Emotional hurts and church wounds. Uh, and I don't, I'm not sure exactly what emotional hurt entails. Uh, it can, it's a wide variety. I understand that. But those two things, if that's you, uh, emotional hurts and, and church wounds, I want you to call in. Uh, and, and that number right now, 254-2480, or you can email prayer at WGNM.com. Uh, I'd love to hear from you and, and, and just let us know uh, how we need to pray for that. Uh, Leonard call in. He needs prayer for he and his wife as they're hurting financially. They need to ride. They need to move as their landlord is selling the property for the homes to be torn down. Father, right now, I just pray for provision for Leonard and his wife, uh, both uh, transportation and a home. Father, right now, we just declare that you help them find a home uh, in Jesus' name. Uh there's a lady called in for prayer for her daughter, whose name is Johnny. Is in a, uh, Johnny's in a nursing home. Um, her granddaughter, there's a, some family issues here. So there, there needs to be, uh, well, I tell you what, when you have family disunity and nursing home, that right there, enough said. Uh, Lord, right now, we just pray for this situation. We come against the spirit of confusion, the spirit of dissension, and we command it to flee in Jesus' name. We speak unity to this family, unity of decision, unity of purpose in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Loretta is asking for prayer for her family. Father, we just lift up Loretta's family to you. We just ask right now that you begin to move in her family. Guard them, Father. Put a hedge of protection around them in Jesus' precious name. Doris in Macon, uh, she's having pain in her legs. Her veins in her legs are, are hurting. Uh, please pray, pray, pray for her legs to quit hurting. Um, Father, right now, we just lift up doors to you. We just ask for your Holy Spirit to be present with her 
And Father, I just ask for the legs to begin to have a free flow of blood, free, free, free flow of everything that needs to happen in these legs to reduce this pain. I speak to the pain and I command it to go. The veins function properly in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. From the top of her head to the soles of her feet. Father, right now, for anything related to the legs, the health issues that have been caused by the legs not functioning properly, uh, that clears up as well in Jesus' name. You know, we had a word of the Lord a few weeks ago about legs. and We prayed for legs and we had knees healed. We had uh, uh, some gout healed. Uh, it, 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 phenomenal, phenomenal. God just, God knows what he's doing. Uh, there's a, uh, we had an anonymous caller. Uh, someone, there's a family who wants to put this lady in a nursing home and uh, she does not want to go. And uh I understand that. We're just going to pray for peace over this whole situation. Father, right now, we just pray for healing for this lady. Uh, Father, right now, we just pray for uh, a spirit of, uh, of dependence upon you, but independent mobility for her. And Lord, right now, we just pray for a supernatural resurgence of power in her body, a healing presence in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Don't forget, if you're dealing with, before the show is over, we are going to pray for people. The Two things the Lord had me write down during the, 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 the before time, the worship time before. Emotional hurt and church wounds. If that's you, uh, if you're dealing with emotional hurt and church wounds, um, 254-2480 is the phone number. You can email prayer at wgnm.com. Uh, I've got a couple, another event that's coming up that I want to mention to you. And, and this video is a little longer, but it's, it's so, so very important. Um, I want to, uh, for those of us who uh, belong to Pentecostal denominations, uh, whether it be Church of God, Assembly of God, uh, True Church of God in Christ, uh, or Church of God in Christ, um, uh, several of the Pentecostal denominations, we can trace our roots back to the Azusa Street Revival. And um, that was back in uh, 1906, I think, yeah. And um, I want to, uh, the, the, we're coming up on the 110th anniversary. And um, Louis Giglio, who uh, uh, is part of the call, uh, he is uh, big on this. And um, we're, I'm really excited about this one because on April 9th they have basically rented out the uh, LA Coliseum, and uh, this is about this is going to be a video about the story. It's a little long, but I wanted to get it in there uh, because it's it's going to spur. I believe this event is going to spur a stadium revival movement across our country, and uh, you know stadiums are are any size. And I believe we're going to start seeing this also in Macon and Middle Georgia because I think the revival is going to be so big, it's these facilities are the ones that can take care of it. So uh, I want you to watch this video. It's very awesome. Uh, you'll see the excitement uh, in, in his, in his uh, delivery. In 1997, Promise Keepers put a million men on the mall to pray for America, an historic event in church history. And I begin to declare the hearts of the fathers are turning to the children, and there's coming a corresponding movement of the young people turning to the fathers. I had no idea what was being launched. It led to a supernatural series of events that on September 2nd, into the new millennium, 400,000 young people gathered together for 12 hours to cry out to God. It launched the movement of the call, and now we're 16 years into that movement. I always knew that the call was some kind of like a John the Baptist type movement because it was about fasting and prayer and Nazarites, and it was about turning America back to God. It was after this that I began to ask the question, has the call failed? Because we haven't seen America turn back to God. And the Lord spoke to me when I asked that question. And he said, Lou, if it truly was a John the Baptist type movement, 
you can bet there's a Jesus movement coming. It's another massive baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we're dreaming about. For three years, we begin to pray stadiums would be filled. So I call my friend and I tell him this story. And he says, Lou, do you remember my dream that I had? He says, in the dream, I received five sets of five plane tickets. And in the dream, we could only fly united. And he knew it had to do that the church must unite because only a united church can heal a divided nation. He said, I was so concerned that I would miss the expiration date. And it was in 1,080 days, the tickets expired. I wake up from the dream, look up 1,080 days from the dream. Guess what day it is? It's April 9th, 2016, the 110th anniversary of the Azusa Street Revival. From that moment on, I've known that God has a date with his church. As we're praying this, my friend and I, we actually go to the Memorial Coliseum in Los Angeles, and somehow they let us get in there and we claim it for Stadium Christianity. Then I get an email from a young lady in Washington State. She says, I had this dream. I saw this huge stadium and it was both a football field and it was a baseball field. It was so vivid. She said, I woke up and I Googled to see if there was any stadiums that was both the Super Bowl and the World Series. She said, there's only one. It's the Coliseum in Los Angeles. I think you're supposed to do the Colazusa there. So I was convinced in my heart that God wanted to do the stadium, but I just didn't have faith to raise the kind of money that it would cost to buy the field. I was reading Matthew 13, and it says when a man finds a treasure, he goes and hides it in a field and sells all that he has to buy that field with joy. You know, there just comes a time when you just want something more than anything else. For me, my calling has been revival for 40 years. And I would rather get revival than anything else except my own kids loving Jesus. And I sense the Lord said, sell the house to buy the field, the stadium for the treasure of the unity of the body of Christ and for revival. This is not about some huge thing that I'm doing. I could care less if anybody knows about it, but I want revival. And I think we're at a point in America that everybody's gotta to begin to ask the question, how much do we really want God in America? Maybe it's time for the whole body of Christ to buy the field, to sell out for the greatest outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I believe in the next year we will begin to see the greatest awakening America has ever seen. And we won't just talk about the past, we'll talk about the future, a new Jesus movement, a new Azusa Street. Come, not just join us, let's work together, mobilize, and move this thing across the earth. We're not going for an event, we're going for a massive race. It's not just Azusa then, it's Azusa now. Isn't that exciting? I tell you what, I you know I can't wait to see what God does as a result of this. And you know, it's not just about the meeting too. They've uh, this this organization is getting ready to I mean flood Los Angeles with prayer teams and ministry teams and and uh, evangelistic teams and and outreaches and 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 just flood Los Angeles. And you know that's going to have an effect because. Uh, Los Angeles is obviously where Hollywood is, and, and that's going to have an effect on our country uh, by ministering to the people uh, who, who deal with our popular entertainment, our culture. Uh, so that's going to be a pretty big deal. I'm going to get the, um, in case you didn't catch it, uh, the website for that uh, is right there. It's Saturday, April the 9th, um, Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum, Azusa Now 2016. Uh, dot com and I fixed my my spelling error on that one from last week so um, I had too many Z's uh, so anyway if you know the revival that hit Azusa Street in the early 1900s changed the way ministry was done 
up till that time, it had been a largely segregated issue. Uh, and I tell you what, the, it was a, such a, uh, um, a multicultural, multiracial revival there at the beginning in, the, in Los Angeles. So this is just a few blocks away from Azusa Street. And so they are going into this area and they are going to claim Los Angeles for Jesus Christ. Uh, I can't wait to, I'm hoping they're streaming the stuff. I haven't found anything on there yet. Uh, now the word of the Lord uh, before the program uh, was we were going to talk about emotional hurts and church wounds. And um, I really felt like there was a call for that. I, I know that I've been, this, is, this affected my life. Uh, emotional hurt, church wounds, what was done uh, to me and my family was, uh, uh, was incredible, uh, incredibly bad. <laughs> but God came through and has uh, re redeemed that time uh, to the point where I, I speak a lot about uh, healing church hurts and, and going through and letting go of that bitterness. So as a result of that, we had Mitch call in. Mitch called in and said that uh, he was responding to the emotional hurt and church wounds. He realizes he's getting offended pretty easily by people he really respects. It's not usual for him. States that he hasn't watched the program before and blew his mind when Rip would say uh, that Rip would say emotional hurts and church wounds. Uh, so Mitch, we're going to pray for you right now. Uh, we're going to lift you up in prayer. Uh, you can still call in on this word, uh, uh, the emotional hurts and church wounds. Because uh, I know that's what will, I'll tell you, church wounds especially, that'll get you. Uh, that'll keep you out of church. That'll keep you away from God, uh, away from fellowship with other believers. Uh, and so we need to really guard ourselves. Father, right now we just lift Mitch up to you. We just ask that you begin to uh, work in Mitch that will allow him first and foremost to stop getting offended so easily. Uh, Father, right now I just pray for a hedge of protection around his heart, around his spirit. Uh, Father, that he will be able to take the things that are said or done and then run that through you uh, and, and not allow himself to get offended so easily. And Father, right now we just speak of peace over Mitch, uh, a, a healing. Father, we just ask for your spirit to be a healing salve to these wounds uh, that have been caused. Uh, Father, that he understands that a, a relationship with you is paramount but that you also ask us to fellowship with one another and that uh, unity in the body be first and foremost in his mind. Uh, Lord, right now we just ask for a healing. Father, that it would just be instant in his spirit, in his mind, that it clicks, that there is, there's nothing to worry about, there's nothing to be concerned about, there's no reason to take offense in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Mitch, praying for you, brother. Um, we got a couple of uh, CTN prayer requests that we want to take up uh, as well. Uh, you know, right before we go on, I usually send a quick message out to all of our other station managers. Because uh, CTN, we've got stations all across the country. Um, we've got our headquarters is in Clearwater. Uh, we have a station there in the Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater area. Uh, we have one in Fort Myers and West Palm Beach, Tallahassee, um, Pensacola. We've got one in Columbus, Georgia. Charleston, South Carolina, Knoxville, uh, Nashville, Tupelo, I hope I remember, Decatur, Illinois, Quincy, Illinois, Jefferson City, Missouri, Dubuque, Iowa, and Denver, Colorado. Uh, we've got stations all over. So uh, it's really, it's, it's watch it grow has been really kind of neat. Um, but we want to lift up uh, several of our CTN stations that are having an issue. Um, Denver and Tallahassee are having equipment issues. Denver's having some issue with uh, audio issues with their playout server, and Tallahassee's having some transmitter issues. Father, I just lift up these two stations to you. We just ask for a divine revelation of wisdom on these equipment issues that they will be able to be fixed quickly and easily uh, and uh, with all speed so that the gospel could continue to go out. And uh, Lord, we lift up our Nashville station as they get ready for the, the NRB convention that's coming to Nashville. Strengthen the staff. Staff give them plenty of energy and uh, um, a right spirit and attitude as they, they prepare for the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now, I want to get into a, just a little bit of scripture today. Uh, oh, I got one more event I want to mention to you, too. Don't forget that number, 
888-242-2480 is the prayer request line. Uh, you can call right now. We've still got about eight and a half minutes left. Uh, and if you get your prayer request in quickly, we can pray for it on the air. Now, if you, if you, toward the end of the program, if it's there, uh, we pray for it before we leave, uh, before we do take everything out of here uh, to set up for our next production. Uh, the National Day of Prayer uh, is Thursday, May 5th of 2016. It's always the first Thursday in May. Now we have, uh, and we'll give you more information as, the, as we get closer to it, but we always have the breakfast program at First Presbyterian Church downtown and a noon event at Rosa Park Square with the government center right behind it. Uh, and then the recap right here on WGNM that evening. Uh, if you want to go to that website, it's National Day of Prayer, makinga.org. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty long website, but uh, National Day of Prayer, makinga.org. Um, so uh, we're getting ready for that. Can't wait to see. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, here in the next few weeks or so, uh, we'll be able to announce the, the keynote speaker for the breakfast and the, and the noon event. Uh, but we really want people to come out for the noon event. Uh, that uh, When they first did a National Day of Prayer uh, here in Macon, uh, the, the crowd stretched all the way from the steps of then City Hall all the way to the New Way. Uh, and so we would love to see people show up praying for our county, for our city, for our region, uh, and see people uh, display that, hey, we need to be a nation of prayer. Now, one of the key scriptures for that, I'm going to go into some scriptures here. Uh, don't forget, there's the number, 254-2480. Call it. Uh, we'll pray for you. Uh, but I really want to get into some real quick scriptures. This is in, especially in regards to, uh, I shared it last week, but especially in regards to the death of Justice Scalia and what we've got going on. Um, uh, this is the... Uh, when they rededicated, or they dedicated the temple before God in Second Chronicles, and I'm reading this out of the Message Bible because it just makes it, it's just a little, gives a little bit different perspective. Uh, God appeared to Solomon that very night and said, I accept your prayer. Yes, I have chosen this place as a temple for sacrifice, a house of worship. If I ever shut off the supply of rain from the skies or order the locusts to eat the crops or send a plague on my people and my people, my God-defined people, respond by humbling themselves, praying, seeking my presence and turning their backs on their wicked lives. I'll be there ready for you. I'll listen from heaven, forgive their sins and restore their land to health. I like that line. From now on, I'm alert day and night to the prayers offered at this place. Believe me, I've chosen and sanctified this temple that you've built. My name is stamped on it forever. My eyes are on it and my heart in it always. As for you, speaking to Solomon now, if you live in my presence as your father David lived, pure in heart and action, living the life I've set out for you, attentively obedient to my guidance and judgments, then I'll back your kingly rule over Israel. Make it a sure thing on a sure foundation, the same covenant guarantee I gave to David, your father, I'm giving to you. Namely, you can count on always having a descendant on Israel's throne. Now, the thing that I really liked about this was the connection between prayer of the people and godly rule. Uh, you know, it's it, godly leadership, godly political leadership. So I wanted to get that out there again in regards to what's going on in our nation right now, uh, that it's going to take us praying for our country uh, and praying for godly people to be in positions of power. We've got elections coming up this year. We've got primaries coming up in Georgia uh, very soon. And we need to make sure that prayer, our prayer life, and that the Holy Spirit is influencing our vote. Not a political party, not what letter is on the end of their, uh, their political affiliation. We need to make sure that we are voting in concordance with what the scriptures say. It does matter. Elections have consequences. And um, we need to be praying for people, godly people, Regardless of what, I don't, it doesn't matter if Grandmama or, or Uncle Joe or whoever would be upset with you on how you vote. You need to vote how the Holy Spirit leads you to vote. Uh, as we're going to see here soon, we've got some 
uh, uh, judge appointments. We need to look at people. One of the things we need is we look to presidents and, and governors, people who appoint judges, people who are in the position of appointing judge. We have to ask because the Bible talks a lot about the judges uh, that God can uh, either uh, can affect a nation through its judges. And so we need to make sure that we are praying for the uh, and, and voting for people who are going to place godly judges in the land. And, and that affects the way our country goes. Um, we've got, uh, let's see here. We've got another person responding to uh, uh, emotional and church hurt. Uh, Mabel, uh, prayer for her son and grandchildren that are not saved. And there's some emotional and church hurt. Lord, we lift up Mabel to you. We just ask right now, Father, that uh, you help this family. Help Mabel deal with this emotional and church hurt. And Lord, we pray for her son and her grandchildren. They're not saved. Father, I just ask right now that you put people in their path to lead them and point them back to you. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Curtis and Dexter uh, had an uncle died uh, December of last year. The family is still grieving. Uh, Father, I just ask right now for Curtis and his family that you begin to help heal this grief. Help this family process this grief. Help this family come out of this grief in a proper way. Father, let them know that you are there to comfort them. Holy Spirit, just be that comforter for this family. Draw them to Jesus. Draw them to, the, to our King. Draw them. Uh, Holy Spirit, we just ask for just a divine revelation to them in Jesus' precious name. I know that can be rough, uh, grieving. Uh, and you know, there's a time to grieve. Uh, I would never begrudge anyone grief because I understand. Uh, obviously, all of us have been through the death of loved ones and uh, people that have gone too soon. Uh, and, and it's the, but their grief is a process, and uh, you know no one needs to put a, a time limit on it necessarily. But there's but you do need to move through the process. Uh, the scripture says, "Yea, though I have walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil." The problem isn't walking through the valley of the shadow of death. It, it's walking, it's setting up camp there. You shouldn't camp, set up camp in the valley. But we just got about a minute left. Uh, if you want to call now, go ahead, call in. Uh, the phone line will be open, uh, and we will uh, pray for that before we get done here this afternoon. Um, Shirley is calling uh, for, our, she's got arthritis in the knee. Father, right now, we just lift up Shirley to you. We just command the pain to go. Father, right now, Holy Ghost lubricant on the knee. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Nancy in Macon is praying for her son, salvation for her son, Stephen. Uh, and then she also had uh, surgery two weeks ago, a work comp situation, and they haven't called her or checked on her since October. Um, and she's saying, yes, Lord. We lift up Nancy to you, Father, in Jesus' name, healing and recovery and provision uh, after the surgery. Uh, that's all the time we've got for today. Join us again next week on the open window where we will be praying for you. Call the number, uh, call us uh, at any time. We'll see you. Bye.